Good evening. This is Thursday, August 21st, 75 days until the 2008 presidential election. There is a house in Sedona, and in Phoenix, another one. And five condos been the ruin of many a poor young boy. I forgot to count Arlington. Our fifth story in the countdown. Elections rarely turn now on deep meaning, nor on intercontinental ballistic missile treaties, nor even on war and peace. They turn on symbolism. And John McCain just fell into a big, giant, steaming pile of symbolism. When America's housing crisis hit home for him in utterly unpredictable fashion. How many houses do you and Mrs. McCain have? I think uh, I'll, I'll have my staff get to you. I'll okay. kind of tell you about that. Hey, so I'm not asking any of them for their. Uh, I'll have them get to you. McCain's staff did follow up, claiming four homes. But media reports initially put the number at seven, a fact not overlooked in a new national ad already out today from Obama. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. Maybe you're struggling just to pay the mortgage on your home. But recently, John McCain said the fundamentals of our economy are strong. Hmm. Then again, that same day, when asked how many houses he owns, McCain lost track. He couldn't remember. Well, it's seven. Seven houses. And here's one house America can't afford to let John McCain move into. Politico.com reporting that the Obama campaign is deploying surrogates in 16 states, talking to media, holding news conferences, hammering at the issue of McCain's homes. Obama himself leading the way today, referring to another comment yesterday, which we'll get to presently, about the great economy. There was another interview, this is yesterday, same day, where... Somebody asked John McCain, how many houses do you have? And he said, I'm not sure. I'll have to check with my staff. <laughs> True quote. I'm not sure. I'll have to check with my staff. So they asked his staff and he said, at least four. At least four. Now think about that. I guess if you think that being rich means you got to make $5 million, uh, oh, and if you don't know how many houses you have, then it's not surprising that you might think the economy was fundamentally strong. The McCain campaign apparently panicked, issuing three separate statements, throwing the kitchen sink at Obama today, tossing in Obama's $4 million book sales, Hawaiian vacation, arugula, guns and religion, offshore drilling, Obama's, quote, million-dollar mansion, singular, and resurrected Tony Rezco in a new ad, despite the fact Obama has never been accused of any wrongdoing regarding Rezco. McCain's spokesman describing McCain, by contrast, as, quote, not an arugula-eating, pointy-headed professor type, but a guy who lived in one house for five and a half years, in prison. He did not explain what any of that, even if any of it is true, has to do with whether or not how, you know how many houses you own. This is the third time McCain's campaign has used POW as a reflexive non sequitur, a trend now risking self-parody, a noun, a verb, and POW. In McCain's defense, he does not have a million-dollar mansion. His modest Sedona ranch was not on the cover of Architectural Digest or any... What? July 2005? Mm -hmm. Spotlighting the redesign the McCain's paid for by the architectural firm of Shiner Day and Associates, like the rear patio with swimming pool just off the guest house and the master bedroom patio with a spa and outdoor fireplace, the same 15-acre ranch where the non-arugula eating senator held a barbecue in March, feasting on the much more macho couscous. <laughs> that ranch, possibly one source of McCain's confusion, as he told reporters there that he's got six houses on that property alone. Plus the $800,000 Virginia condo, $700,000 Phoenix loft, the 2.7 mil condo in Coronado Island, plus the second condo they closed on there this June, the million-dollar La Jolla condo, plus the $4.6 million condo in Phoenix plus a minority stake in the Arizona Diamondbacks, plus a million-dollar parking lot, plus a private jet. And then some rich people stuff, too. Countdown tonight, unable to confirm that the McCains have now converted four of their houses into a hotel on Boardwalk after buying the electric company Waterworks and the B&O Railroad. It's turned out to MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also, of course, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. How many houses did the McCains have? Uh, well, am I under oath? 
<laughs> Did you have a staff to get back to me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we reported in the magazine last year seven. Uh, now there's some reports on the web of eight. People have looked uh, through lots of uh, real estate records and so forth. Uh, I've, I, I didn't count them all. I've been in a couple of them. Uh, and I was at the ranch in Sedona, by the way, before that redo. Uh, I was there, I think, in uh, 2001. Uh, there was no swimming pool. Uh, the, the thing that I think got McCain tripped up is that I think legally he probably doesn't really own them per se, himself. Uh, when he married Cindy, he married into a family empire of at least, now worth at least $100 million. Uh, those houses are probably mostly in her name. So he doesn't really uh, pay attention to the details, which in its own way is, is almost more damning yeah. than knowing how many houses you have. And of course you can't say, no, I don't own any of them, she owns all of them, because that's another version of this same story. But give me a campaign... Yes, even more so, yes. G give me a campaign parallel, historically. What is this like? Is this like the, the first George Bush not really knowing what a supermarket scanner was? Or where does this, where does this rank? What is, what is parallel to this? Well, I'm tempted to say Marie Antoinette, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's less having to do just with the economy, although that's very much a part of it. Don't forget McCain talked about the, his definition of rich being people who make $5 million and the economy being fundamentally sound when his own ads right now say that the economy is terrible. Uh, it's kind of a cultural thing. I, I think it almost more relates to somebody like Sarge Shriver a million years ago when he was... George McGovern's uh, vice presidential candidate going into Brooklyn and showing that he uh, could bond with Jewish American voters by having a kosher hot dog and washing it down with a glass of milk. I mean, it's just it's just out of out of whack with current American understanding. Speaking of out of whack, uh, did the McCain response strike you as a little panicky? I mean, you bring up Tony Resco, and of course, you then invite other people to bring up the Keating Five, but particularly to insert the POW stuff for everything as if it is immunity. Uh, do you not rather quickly trivialize the meaning of what he went through if you're going to bring it up for everything? Yes, and I think they're going to it way too many times. And it's the original story that defined John McCain that still, when you read it in his book, uh, Faith of My Fathers, when you read about it in Nightingale's Song, you can't help but have admiration and respect for the guy. And I think he wisely, for many years, stayed away from it as a political tool. He really did. And he, uh, but now, it not only defines him, it's become a crutch in the campaign. And I think he is in danger of trivializing it. By the time they get to the convention in St. Paul, uh, there might not be much of it left to use. One thing for sure, at least in terms of the convention in Denver and attendance, I understand you've learned something about John McCain losing uh, a big name, in effect, to Barack Obama, not necessarily because of this. Well, I think it's in. interesting symbolism. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, who's a, a worldwide figure, of respect and who knows McCain and who never takes part in politics very 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 rarely I think he's only been to one convention has decided that he called and said to the Obama staff I want to come to this convention because it's going to be a historic night on that night in Invesco field where you give your acceptance speech in front of 70,000 people on the night of Martin Luther King's anniversary I want to be there and so that'll be a, a measure of sort of the global nature uh, and the historic nature of what Obama will be doing on that night. A lot of people love that man. He's going to draw quite, quite the true. attendance and quite the crowd just by himself and uh, passing that on in some respects to Obama. Uh, MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also, of course, senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Keith.